Hello everybody, Brian Salter here with Salter Racing Engines and today I want to give you a little uh, trick of the trade to help your engine survive thrust loads. Uh, if you're into high performance uh, or racing or have any kind of heavy clutch or on and off the gas like we would be in circle track or something like that, you are definitely going to want to hear this. Uh, and you might even break some bad habits like holding the clutch in at a stop sign or that kind of thing you know riding the clutch on a hill you might you might learn something today that will prevent you from doing that in the future but what is thrust thrust is nothing more than the crankshaft in an engine going forward and rearward fore and aft right and most engines you want between five thousandths and eight thousandths thrust clearance and of course to each his own and there are exceptions to that but that's pretty much where i try to stay within and it doesn't matter what i'm building unless unless it's uh you know something something different and weird and all that but pretty much five thousandths to eight thousandths is pretty standard now with certain types of racing you have very uh very high crank twist when you're on and off the throttle uh, what we call crank rebound you will also have with certain types of drag racing um, guys who will sidestep the clutches and that is an enormous amount of thrust load on the crank before you launch and after you launch because uh, some of these clutches have some serious pressure on them and whatever that pressure plate is doing that crankshaft is feeling every bit of it so first of all you need to know what your thrust bearing clearance is and I've got I've got a block set up here um, that we've had in here. We're getting ready to redo it. This is, uh, we just got it tore down, just kind of doing some checks and type thing. Here of this particular crank, you can see the dial indicator that we have 10 thousandths clearance, and I'm by myself again today, guys. 10 thousandths clearance. That is your thrust right there, okay? Now, I don't have the rear, uh, this is a Chevrolet, and I don't have the, the rear main cap on because I'm going to show you something. But normally, in a Chevrolet and other engines as well, the, rear, the thrust bearing is in the back of the block. It's the very last main cap. And a Ford, the thrust bearing is usually around the center cap. So, either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to check them the same. And in general, you're going to want about the same amount of clearance. Now, with that being said, what if I could show you a way that could guarantee you direct oil pressure on your thrust main without doing any kind of crazy plumbing or crazy drilling and, and not so much pressure that it causes oil leaks or anything like that, but just a guarantee that you're going to have some oil flow to that front and rear uh, thrust surface of the crankshaft so that it will you know ensure that this crankshaft thrust bearing lives under the abuse that you're going to put it through well today i plan on doing just that so don't go anywhere and by the way this modification literally takes about 10 minutes all right so here we are at the thrust the rear main of this Chevrolet, like I said, in, in other engines, sometimes they're in the middle. And again, you can see, I'm going to grab my screwdriver again. It's hard to be, a, I need about eight arms to do this. I'm going to pry the crank fore and aft. Uh, you see that little gap right there? That is your oil clearance that right there is your oil clearance we'll shove the crank backwards now it's up against it everybody see that 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 is where the oil lubricates the thrust part of that crankshaft when i push it fore and aft okay i'm going to show you a little trick when you build these engines that you can do to make sure you get oil on the thrust all right and it doesn't take you long at all 
Hang tight. So what I'm talking about is a thrust bearing modification. All right, thrust bearing modification. And it's very simple. Let's imagine that your thrust bearing here is our, in our drawing, okay? So this is your upper half of your bearing. There's your lower half of the bearing. And here's where we're gonna make the modifications. I want you to notice where I've circled. Do you see that cut right there? Notice that that lower half is not cut on one side. You got your rotation of the crank. Notice this side. A little chamfer cut right there and not one there. What happens when you do that is as this crank rotates with oil pressure being applied to it, the crank rotates, the oil is traveling with it. It gets trapped right here and it forces oil fore or aft, right? Let's look at a top view of this bearing. We're gonna cut a chamfer on one half of the bearing and then the opposite end of the lower half. All right, I'm gonna grab that bearing I got to pause it. I'm going to grab that bearing and show you what that's going to look like. Okay, I've got a thrust bearing here. This is a H series bearing, so it looks all discolored. That's because it's, it's uh, heat treated a different way and all that. I want you to notice something. Look what I've done. I'm sorry if it's, man, I hope that really focuses in. Right there, just like in the drawing I showed you. And on the opposite side, I'll flip it over here. Now, just like in the drawing, as the crankshaft rotates clockwise, it will come on that front half of the bearing. It will go in where that chamfer is cut, and then you've got that little ledge right there. I'm having to do this with two hands, guys. You got that little ledge right there and it will trap that oil and push it towards the rear, thus lubricating your thrust. On the opposite end here, same thing on the front. Sorry, can't hold it too well, there we go. Same thing on the other side of the bearing. Okay, the oil rotates around, it comes up underneath, and then the other bearing is not chamfered, so that catches it and it forces it in the direction of the camera, right, right as, you, as you see it. All right, let me set one down. I'll show you what a, how to do this. Now, I've cut this a little bit heavy for you so that you can see what's basically happening. This would be the upper half of the bearing that goes up in the block, your oil pressure side, okay? Again, this sets up in the block like so. And imagine the crankshaft spinning clockwise and the oil traveling with it. And as you can see, it's gonna follow that chamfer and then the lower half will not be chamfered. So it creates a little wall for that oil to be trapped on and forces it towards my finger as you see in the background. And then again, on the opposite side, this end of the bearing is not cut, but the lower half is cut. And because the lower half is cut and the top bearing is not on that side, it gets trapped and forces it towards the thrust side of where my thumb is. All right, it absolutely does no harm I've been doing it for years. I mean, well, probably when I, I learned this trick when I was a teenager from, uh, 
David Penix showed me this years and years and years ago. Gosh, I don't know. Let's see, 40, almost 37 years. 37 years ago. Something like that. Anyways. So I've said all that to say this. Uh, I know this is probably not great quality of a video, but if you go back and watch it a couple times, it's going to make perfect sense to you. All right, so the idea is that if we can get oil pressure, okay, to follow that track and go to the thrust, and then the same on the opposite side, right, you're going to have extra protection than what the factory intended. Well, think about it. You're pushing these blocks, these engine blocks and crankshafts, with the exception of the high-end race stuff, you're pushing these factory blocks a lot of times way harder than they were ever intended to be pushed. And for the most part, they, they hold up very well. But if you could make it even better, I'm telling you, this is a little trick not to overlook. And I've got a suitcase full of them, okay? So it came up because uh, a YouTube channel had a thrust main issue, and I don't think it was anything that uh, that guy did. I do think it was caused, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't there, but after looking in, it's very possible that the dyno actually caused this issue, and I have seen that before. So be careful when you dyno things, guys. Make sure that when you bolt the engine to the dyno, that it freely turns with a wrench. And when you put an engine in the car, make sure that transmission is not binding on the back of that crank. Whatever rotational force it takes to rotate that engine outside the car, it should not gain much at all when you put it in the car. Now granted, the transmission will add just a touch, but literally just a touch. If it takes you, I'm just throwing a number out, 15 pounds of force to rotate your crank and you put it in the engine and now it takes 90 pounds of force, something's wrong. Stop and check it, right? But aside from all that, the harsh driving we do in high performance and racing and street rotting and not all that extra oil protection, it's always just a plus. It's just a plus. So don't let that freak you out. I've been doing this for more than 30 years. And um, just break the edge, 10,000 chamfer on opposite ends, top and bottom. Make sure you think about it, like in my drawing, crank rot rotates this way and so does the oil. So I'm gonna cut that chamfer there. It will be trapped by this edge and force that oil forward. Likewise here, this chamfer right here is cut, it's trapped by this edge and forces the oil rearward. So you're only doing opposite corners, front and back, all right? Anyways, Brian Salter with another professional racing engine tip. And um, hey, hope it helps. And like, share, subscribe. Please like, please like, guys. Um, I get a lot of comments and... And I'll see a lot of views, but guys, just click that little like button. It's not a big deal, right? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And pray for all those who uh, are going through so many hard times right now. We are, we are hurting as a nation. And my goodness, people, if you don't vote with your brain come November, it ain't going to do nothing but get worse. All right. Have a great day.